Good morning, good afternoon, good evening viewers, welcome to next installment of the Whitby Academy Challenge Save. Uh, for me it's been quite a while, I haven't actually recorded a video in two weeks, the one uh, uploaded last Saturday was um, uh, was pre-recorded because I, I went on holiday, then came back, got sick again, but now I'm uh, better, but my throat may be still a bit raspy and, and whatnot, so apologies for the voice. And yeah, it's just uh, a bit weird to be recording again, so I need to get used to it. And yeah, we are in the 2034-35 season, no, 33, 34 uh, season, and we have our youth intake uh, for this season, an excellent intake. There's a lot of players I'm really excited about, uh, <clears throat> and it's uh, been a pretty decent season in League One. I can't even remember how we did last season, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have a look for the players, we'll see which ones are good. Uh, and yeah, just have a discussion around them. So first of all, the Congolese winger, Screevy Batumba. Mm. Mm. Crossing dribbling's good, no pace, and terrible, terrible potential. It's an excellent intake, five stars, golden generation allegedly, centre back, 5'11". Nope, no saving grace for Oakley Sucker, <laughs> except for his name, I suppose. Uh, I mean, he was not meant to be great with the name Sucker, was he? Um, next, Callum Pendergrass. I actually went to school with a person with this name, uh, which is very odd. He wasn't very good at football uh, back in school, uh, so I guess he lives up to his namesake. Uh, goalkeeper, another It's weird. You know, for every Danish goalkeeper going to Youth Academy, if I had a dollar for every Danish uh, goalkeeper we got from Youth Academy, I'd have two which is very strange that it happened twice as the old saying goes let's go notification I don't know if you can hear that it's uh, not very important Andres Hoyland 6-1 fairly loyal we did just get a star goalkeeper in our most recent intake so uh, yeah I don't know I don't think that Anders is going to be breaking the first team now for the top talents you never know maybe maybe someone worth keeping and promoting Alex Baker, an Irishman. Mm. Mm. Maybe, maybe there is something there. If we maybe may play them more centrally, it's got good crossing and dribbling, really good crossing. Uh, but no, uh, we'll see. He, he actually doesn't look terrible as far as wingers or players go. But we are League One now. And I feel like we've scored the second set of goals this season so far. Our defense has been a bit, yeah. So we, I feel like we're on the cusp of a promotion push this season. Junior Stewart, winger, 15 and 13. Okay, that's good pace. He could run quick. He's predetermined, so he'll chase the ball. And he will have high spirits while doing so. Junior Stewart looks pretty okay physically. He probably will be decent for a lower league uh, team of uh, those physicals. Brad Williams, a more technical player, six foot. Okay, that's pretty nice. Tall players do better. I feel like I feel like his description is pretty accurate. I would say I'd play him as a number ten uh, behind a striker, fifteen years old. He might have to something, and maybe his potential could get a little boost. Um, but yeah, Brad Williams definitely doesn't look bad. Mad Frisch Ringo. Okay, left back or left wing back more. Uh, to be more specific, 6-3, that's good, consistent, at 15 is very good, uh, apparently a lot of improvement in him, temperamental's a bit, uh, a bit smelly, crossing's good, his marking's not terrible, tackling's not terrible, uh, positioning is pretty terrible though, physically, okay, so there's Mads, Mads, that's actually, <laughs> uh, there's a TikToker that does like, uh, she pretends to be a middle class person and goes out of a road man called Mads, so that's pretty funny, if you know the TikTok, of course, uh, but yeah, he actually, Ringo could be, he, he might be a backup at some stage if he develops nicely, Adam Egan, meant to be a midfielder sl slash winger, maybe even, uh, good dribbling, Acceleration 5-6 is a bit annoying. Uh, we we switch. We swear we were swapping between a 4-2-3-1 and a 4-2-2-2. Um, so we do need some midfielders, maybe even cams. I feel like I don't know. I like my midfielders to be physical, especially DMs to be more, you know, 
physically intimidating to the opposition and winning the set like headers and, and all that. So maybe he is a winger. He would have to maybe have to be retrained. Also, take a shot every time I say maybe, huh? That would be a pretty good drinking game. Uh, Italian, Guglio Fama, centre back, 6 2. I wish we got like a, a strong tool centre back because we always get like a tool one. Jumping reach is good, but they're just like pussy farts. They get pushed off the ball. Come on, man. Eat some. I don't, I don't know what Italians eat that could give them body mass. Uh, to be fair, they're all carbohydrates. So consistent performer though. Uh, second nationality always good. Injury prone is a bit intimidating when when trying to uh, sign a player. But, for the Youth Academy, definitely pretty good. If he can get a bit taller, a bit stronger, I reckon he'd be pretty decent as a backup, although I don't know if he'll be a future world beater, but an Italian centre-back is always fun to get, especially if you're not in Italy. Uh, it's just a tradition for the Italians to be great defenders. Paolo Maldini and all them. Um, now for the elite talents. <laughs> After we're done stereotyping all the Italians. Ivan Palmo... Palamequi, Palamequi? I don't know, um, no Spanish pronunciations. Um, Ivan a winger, so probably technically gifted if we're going with the uh, Spanish stereotype. Uh, mm, no, I don't think he'll be working in a tiki taka. Although, saying that he's not, he's pretty well rounded in in a sense. Good with corners, which is interesting. I, I, I like that. We have a couple of tall players, Dougie being 6 or 5 at the back, has got a couple goals. We've got a lot of jumping reach now on the team, which is really good to see, um, and it helps out a lot. Consistency is a bit scary. No injury proneness is a good start. Could I see him being a central attacking midfielder, playing a number 10 role? Maybe. Maybe. He doesn't have excellent passing, no vision, so... so maybe with a more leniency towards no. Um... A bit slow for a winger though. So he's he's put us in an awkward position. Next, Mohamed Montari, another winger slash attacking midfielder. Oh, I got excited. A lot of greens, but then I saw his pace and acceleration. I'm very sad. So I see we will not be using him as a winger. If anything, central attacking midfield exclusive. Six foot four. Hold your horses. 14 dribbling at six foot four is very interesting. Uh, 15 years old, so you might even grow taller than that. Imagine being 6 foot 4 at 15. That's, well, we had Leo Lloyd back in the day when he was like 6 foot 7 at 16, so there's always that inconsistent performer, but I'm pretty sure that can change. A uh, lot of potential, which is what we like to see. Good technique, teamwork, passing is okay. Flair for a big lad. This is very interesting. First touch obviously has to be good. Um, I'll be honest, tackling's good as well. He, he, he's going to be a Sigourney Volante defensive midfielder, 100%. Mohamed Mokhtari, I'm liking the look of him. More physicality midfield. Uh, pace is lacking. Strength is obviously lacking. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what Mohamed Mokhtari can develop. Probably put on some strength training. Um, and yeah, just make him a, a really, like, just annoying to play against for the opposition. Could he play centre-back? Off the... Mm, no, two position. Probably need to get that up as well. Kenneth Youssef. Defender. No nonsense, no nonsense centre-back. So I'm expecting a big tall man. Or oh boy, actually, he's going to be 15-16 with um, no first touch or technical... Well, 10 first touch. Apologies. 9 tackling, 9 marking, 8 positioning. Uh, how tall is he? 6-2. That's pretty tall. 15 jump reach, okay, I, I like you like that. I don't know why I said that. Heading 9, free kick taken 10 for a no-nonsense centre-back, that's pretty fun. Well, we'll see if he, he probably might be like third or second best free kick take at the club. At 16 years old while playing no-nonsense centre-back, you don't see that every day. And ambitious is a bit annoying. Uh, consistency, it's not, not too bad. Uh, well, no, it is bad. It is bad. Um, that's why it's on the con side. Um, except for his potential and bravery. Not much to say from the scouts, but definitely a future free kick taker. Kenneth Yusuf, if he manages to develop and break into the first team. Mark Turner. It's nice that they've been like in order of uh, 
current ability, which I'm very excited for. Alberto Aguado, another Swiss. Alvaro Navarro is actually, he's out on loan, developing nicely. Probably few, like on the cusp of breaking to the first team next season, which is very exciting to look at the season review. Next, Mark Turner, fullback, 5'11. That's very good. 13 crossing, good. Uh, physicals, decently well rounded. Pace is not too terrible. Attacking fullback, I like to see that. Off the ball, 10. Team look 11, good vision, decent work, Cray will be up and down, bounce personality, inconsistent, it's, uh, brave. Uh, see, there's there's a good foundation, but there's a lot like we need to develop. There probably will be time in the future. If he was five stars, it would have made me very, very happy, but definitely a future right back, and can, we can kind of play left back, although he's, he's only got a reasonable left foot. But Mac, Mark Turner... If he he's one of those players that actually develops because sometimes for manager you can have a cracking player that has no development, kind of like what happened with Jermaine Tansy. Pretty much no development. Same happened with um, Wilfred Williams or Xavi Alonso. Never really developed, um, and, and it sucks to see. So hopefully Mark Turner is one of those players that does kick on because if he can get his like 12 pace at least. And a bit more tackling and, and, and marking positioning. He'll be a fantastic fullback for us in the future. Central midfielder slash attacking midfielder Fabian Dennison. Two stars, five star potential, uh, which looks very attractive to us. So now, unambitious, that sucks. No vision for a midfielder, that sucks. Uh, inconsistent, that sucks. Tries to play, no plays, no through balls. Okay. Um, hmm. 12 tackling. Okay, ball winning midfielder. That's that's all I got from that. Stamina 13. 5 8 is not the tallest, but if we pair him up with our 6 up for Swede and and Denison, then we could have a nice, like, Kante and, like, I guess Matic is the only first 6 up for DM that came to my head. Um, off the ball 9. First touch is not too, like, good. Very good first touch. Uh, 14, not very good, but you know, for our level, is very good. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, would he get some game time next season? Probably not. Uh, but if he develops very nicely, he gets on loan, actually is a player that, you know, kicks on. Uh, I'll be very happy uh, to see him in the first team in a couple of years' time. Alberto Aguado, two and a half stars. Now, this might be a man who would be getting some first team football because there's probably a couple of players when we go to season review that are mm, are they exp like uh, I, I don't want to say his name but it's AJ Press who I've been having second second thoughts about uh, but now let's just focus on Alberto Guado 14 acceleration 10 pace 6 foot that's very nice fairly loyal I always like a loyal player Ooh, hoo, hoo. 11 crossing 12 dribbling 10 finishing 12 first touch Nine composure, that's not terrible. Off the ball, 10. Nine passing, 12 technique. Heading, 13. Physicals are very, well, not very, but decently well rounded until you get to strength, but you're never going to produce a, a strong 16-year-old unless your name is uh, Alfie, I the, the Welshman. He was 6'4", 13 strength. Um, I believe he has. I want to learn this season. Next season, definitely a solid start and play for us, but that's, again, not for now. But uh, Alberto Aguado, Despite setting me off on a tangent, um, I think we might have a future superstar in our hands. Would he be in a start on, like, will he be getting game time next season in the first team? Yes. Will he get some this season? Yes. Yes, he definitely will. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited to see him in the match engine. Comes to get the deep, uh, comes deep to get the ball. Maybe a bit annoying, but I just, I love a striker that's six foot. I feel like that's the perfect height for a striker. Like a complete striker type uh, player, kind of like R9. That's he was six foot, and so you can you're small enough to be nimble and quick and, and annoying, but big enough to win headers and still be a physical player and intimidating, and tough to get off the ball. I, I don't know, it just works. Um, but yeah, I'm very very happy with Alberto Guardo, and I feel like Switzerland is our lucky nation. Um, with Alberto, does he have any other nations? Spanish. I thought his name. It wasn't Alvaro Navarro is also a bit Spanish, isn't he? So that's I don't know why that's a fun combo we keep getting, but I'm definitely not complaining. Uh, well, this was the season, not the season review. Sorry, this was the youth intake um, 
for this season. Uh, I hope you still remember <laughs> who I am because I haven't been... Well, it feels like to me I haven't recorded in a while, but the last video was uh, a week ago. Um, yeah, I hope you. Uh, I'll see you in the season review section. And I'll put a season review of the 2033-34 season. I don't know what happened there. As you can see, we did win a trophy. First time felt so good, we had to go and do it twice. The Papa John's Trophy returns home to its proper place where it belongs. The most coveted, illustrious, glorious, um, reputation-defining trophy in all of world football. The Papa John's Trophy comes back. We had a nice run with a lot of under-21s teams, which we... Beat with ease, except for the Chelsea ones, which uh, we actually had to go to Pens for. But overall, quite a nice and easy run. Only one loss to Bolton Wanderers, but we had a lot of injured players and a lot of rotation. So, on a whole, uh, pretty successful. Biggest win 4 0 against Plymouth, which is quite nice. Uh, match to remember 3 0 against Chesterfield. We don't know why. Goal, against, uh, goal of the season is actually Trinani's 76th minute, which we'll have a look at now scroll down here we go it was a long shot from what i remember actually one goal of the month uh for that month so that's uh a, a, a good thing to see that we are having players take uh, good long shots and actually put them away he also the assist i imagine in a an, uh, a more realistic graphics engine will look very nice the color on the ball going top corner uh but yeah that will do and trinary has cemented is, well, I'm not going to big up the achievement of winning goal of the season, but it's still one of the better ones, and it's probably one like few one of the few goals that isn't a free kick that would have won, so that's pretty nice. Uh, sponsorship money has been fluctuating from different stuff. We did win and go on a cup run, so that kind of helps. Um, big merchandise sales. Our top so, uh, shirts are obviously O'Keefe, uh, which is our best. Who he, well, he is our best player at the club. Um, Amadou, the Zimbabwean goat, Ian Waters, the, the diminutive, just like dwarf that just creates magic on the pitch. Of Corey, still pretty good, and Handy Sides, hand, well, I call him Handsies uh, from the first season, the OG, still here. Um, it's very good to see him still being able to get into the team, and I think he is probably gonna uh, be here until he retires, um, and probably will pick up a coaching role if he decides to go into coaching. We did actually want to play them off in the August, and you'll see how well we started the season and how disappointing the ending was. So, plan, uh, player of the season, Amadou, young player, Amadou. Uh, goal of the season, we saw, Boram Trinari, goal, uh, top goal scorer, third, 17 from Ronnie O'Keefe. He's 20 years old now, which is crazy how time flies. Uh, assists from Emma Hans, he's 10. Still a productive player, uh, and 10 is not actually a bad return. Age of Oppressive match, uh, Player of the Match awards. 6.9 average rating is not the highest or the best that we've seen. Emil Hansi's 414 appearances is nice and Jermaine Tansy 128 goals. But if Ronnie O'Keefe stays at the club, he probably will beat the record eventually, um, I imagine, because he's been um, pretty good. Although, 25 goals in 79 matches, it might be difficult because we play at such a high level. Uh, and now he's injured, and I'm afraid that this will stun his development. But uh, look at those physicals, so well rounded. It's just uh, lovely to see. Um, just gets me excited. Uh, and yeah, that's the end of season review section screen thing. We'll go into now the squad and how they did. How they did. We'll actually look at the transfers first. See what's happened to squads uh, with the squad, who's gone where, and for how much. No actual permanent sales this season. Uh, just loans for players. So Jay Rowland has been uh, sent on loan, regressed, but has had a pretty decent spell in the Vero National League North, which is good to see. Uh, contract extension not looking likely, I'll be honest. Um, for Jay Rowland, Chris Reed did actually improve. Looks pretty good. I think he's probably got another loan in him next season, and if he can continue this, he'll look like a very useful player for us. 6 2 winger. Very nice. Uh, Robert Dolan. Also at South Shields, we had a bit of a partnership. Um, also developing very nicely. Looks nicely well-rounded. Ambitious personality as well. I don't, I don't know if I noticed that before, but that gets me excited. Um, I hope... Okay, we'll offer him a contract at the end of the season because he looks like one for the future. Peter Douglas obviously identified uh, early on um, as a star, and he has developed nicely at Shrewsbury. 41 appearances, 8 goals. Um, very happy with Pete. Uh, Matty Papp uh, was sent out on loan to Hungary. 
develop well, so I hope we can sell him on for some money, but I don't think he will be uh, actually getting the first team. Alvaro Navarro, the best name in football, oh, 17 acceleration, 13 paces, exciting me. One more loan, or is he ready for the team? Um, 13 composure is good. Maybe we can just improve his finishing, and, uh, and he could probably play wide winger or wide winger. I don't know. You can play in third wingers, I suppose, but I, I meant like a like an actual right wing and not like a right midfielder, a higher up on the wings or as in the centre as a striker, 10 dribbling, 5 finishing, probably have to work on that as I said, um, but looking very very good, I love my Alvaro Navarro, uh, Lorcan Nugent, we tried to squish out some money for him, still a bit of potential in him, does he look like he could be of use to the first team, unlikely, Kings Lynn legend by being there on loan, does he actually recognise this one, no, but 122 appearances, um, if we release him and he doesn't get picked up, uh, that'll be crazy. I mean, we should probably try sell him to uh, to Kings Lynn. I feel that'd be a pretty uh, a fun transfer for Lorcan. Uh, Scott Hill sent out on loan. A bit of improvement. Still doesn't look like he would be of use for the first team. Alfie Jones definitely, definitely getting into the first team next season. Big player. Looking good, developed nicely until again just keeps doing this every season, develops well, and then end of season just drops. Um, but I think that's normal. Actually, I oh, wonder, no, can we look at his no when he comes back? Did he wait? I swear he had a higher tackling as he regressed, and I've just forgot, anyways. Snow Snay Bjord Sigurd Karlsson. We did actually manage to get him out on loan. Didn't go to uh, Iceland, but lower English football. And div actually did have a good progression from the bar, so that's good to see. Definitely another loan next season. Uh, Steven Ibrahim did go on loan. Uh, Nigeria loves calling him up for the under 20s, which is good to see. Uh, would he start for us? Probably not. So, another player to probably look to push out and sell. DJ Beecher, uh, late low in the season, um, doesn't look too terrible. Would he play for us? Again, probably not, and has regressed terribly on loan, looking by that uh, graph. And Ryan Ke Canary, Kearney, uh, a bit of improvement actually on loan, which is good. Doesn't look too terrible, uh, in all fairness to him. He could be a good backup if he is willing to be just that, like an emergency backup for us. Did we release any players? Uh, George Eze, who he's, he actually retired as soon as he got released, so there you go. Josh Brazil also instantly retired, as I thought. Uh, John Hogan was actually picked up by Macclesfield. Uh, they used to be a League 2 club, they are now in the Vero National League. Pre did they finish 23rd? 24th, wow. So he just got relegated, but John Hogan, I'm glad he, can, he found a club out there. Chris McGee uh, also picked up by Barnsley. Really? I suppose he did have good potential. I didn't realize he had that good potential. What the hell? That they would want him. Well, I reckon he might get released again. Uh, maybe it was a... Uh, I don't know. He doesn't look like well breaking to me. Uh, we didn't need him. Jamie Bates has retired. We can't click on. Regan Armour got picked up by Matlock. Josh Walker. Uh, yeah. Basford picked him up for some reason. Finley Burton. Uh, roughly he's going to be one to retire, but he's still here. And Rob Jones did retire. Those were the transfers. Now we'll flick through the under 18s, see how they did. If you're your favorite player or someone you're interested in, want to have a actually look at the players in your own time, feel free to pause. Uh, and yeah, just, just look at development while I'll flick through. Greenfield is 20. I don't know if he's still there. Halla, I kind of forgot about him this season, I'll be honest. But next season, looks like he might be ready. Uh, for promotion into the first team as a rotation option that we have a couple of knees come back Alfie Jones mainly but you need to have a more in-depth look to see if he actually has been regressing under my nose where I feel like he should be getting better but I feel like he used to have really high tackling which is not the case anymore um, which is very deeply upsetting um, alright Chris Reed Good physical, like very good, uh, well rounded physical. Sorry, John Richardson, Jason, even also very good physicals, uh, which is always exciting uh, to see. And when we go through the first team, as a couple of you guys uh, suggested, that we I, I like make like a bit of a you want to see some goal highlights, how they how goals are scoring and their highlights. Um, 
So when we go for the players and if they scored a goal, or like let's say they scored three or five goals, I show I'll show them all. After like when we go uh, and talk about them, there'll be a compilation of their goals. However, if it's like Connor O'Keefe scored 17, I'm not going to be showing you all 17 because uh, I don't think anyone's got the time for that, and this video would be an hour, maybe more, uh, in length. But I'll definitely show you. Some of the highlights we'd like to put like the most exciting goals are just yeah we'll, we'll see how long the clips are and all that but yeah this was the youth academy uh, the under 18s they did win the league again um, they have not they, I can't get into higher league for some reason apparently it costs like a, uh, over a million to get them promoted and the board don't have the money and we are struggling financially and now for uh, the first team as the main squad the first team. I mean, I call them main teams, first teamers, whatever. Uh, we will flick through all of them. Uh, for those who want to like take a pause, look at the stats, uh, attributes, whatnot, feel free to do so in your own time. Feel free to pause. Uh, we'll flick through them. We'll have words about out those outstanding and maybe not so outstanding. Um, and then near the end of the video, because I know some of you guys in the comments are just, uh, you want to see highlights, uh, goals that players are scoring, who's scoring them, well, how they look like, uh, and all that fun stuff. So we'll probably have a goal compilation highlight thingy at the end of the video, after the outro, after say goodbye. At the end of the video, for those who are interested, there'll be the highlights, and feel free uh, to enjoy that and let me know what your favorite goal is, and, and yeah. Uh, I think that'd be pretty fun. So first of all, Charlie Mitchell. Uh, apparently, he does not want to sign an extension. 29 years old now. Uh, end of the road. 360 appearances. He's been here for over 10 years, uh, which is great. A great servant for the club. 12 years in total. Charlie Mitchell. Uh, take a bow. Uh, ex. No, I don't think he ever was captain, but probably could have. Outlasted Eze, who retired. Uh, not up next, Ronnie O'Keefe, the more outstanding of the bunch, uh, a resilient striker um, for Baroque of Ireland. I'm surprised he hasn't got a call up. Uh, physicals look very well rounded. Um, very happy to have him. Um, surprised we actually had such an excellent player come for the youth intake and youth academy. And it yeah, just, wow, definitely fair player off the save so far. Uh, Bit of an annoying thing is that he is injury prone and he did pick up a four month injury. Uh, I am a bit afraid um, that injuries might ruin his progress and and what he might be. But the thing is, like, what, ruin his potential and will be another like what if story. But the thing is, the game thinks he has lead to potential. I completely disagree because this guy, honestly, is tearing up the league. I mean, he's 12 goals in, in two appearances in 24 matches due to injuries. Um, is is you know you, underrated by the game definitely and in the future um he'll still be playing well in the championship i bet uh, up next if you uh great player one of those players that i mentioned earlier that some players either like develop and some don't get on at all sometimes it's very rare they might kick on later on like 23 years old 22 i've seen players not develop until that age and then like develop like crazy i hope if you at some stage uh clicks uh, but then, you know, when they're 22, the, the time they have to develop is very limited before they reach the prime, and that's who they are. Um, so that's why you want to have your players develop as early as possible. If Yanni Okuri, unfortunately, one of those players that has not shown any development, but still decent performances, League 1 is kind of... League 2 was his level, that's where he was very comfortable, like, getting 14 assists um, and all that. Nathan Richards... Uh, his, I was debating, do I get rid of Amadou? But he's... Uh, Amadou is a bomb boy and goat, man. He, you can't get rid of him. Club legend, man. Um, really. Uh, so, Nathan Richards, although great potential, and I'm sure he will take over Amadou. Amadou's, uh, you know, role after he either departs or retires or, or whatnot. But Nathan Richards is definitely the future of the club. In goal, 17 years old. He's played six times, conceded 12, which is not a great ratio, but... Uh, yeah, he's, he's played in the Cups and the Papa John's and, and, and uh, yeah, good rotation option. When Amadou went on holiday, uh, not on holiday, but on international duty, he was always there. Consistent performer. Nathan Richard excites me. Uh, the stars are going, I mean, the arrows are going down, but I'm not, I'm not concerned. He's fairly loyal, which is always nice. Daniel Scott, <sighs> probably time to get released. Uh, I did offer him another, ex like, an extension for another year. 
I thought maybe someone would want to buy him, but that didn't happen. Uh, <clears throat> he's a good rotation option, emergency backup, not rotation option, but emergency backup. And uh, maybe I'm, I'm kidding myself, and it's time to let him go. Uh, Alan Tomlinson stepped up into the first team and has been developing really, really nicely up until uh, last month, or this month, really. Um, but that's okay, because the season's over. Leadership 16, marking 13, tackling 12. The heading of 15 is, is really, really like helpful. Uh, no goals, which is surprising, uh, but for assists, he's six foot with 13 jumping reach, which is a bit iffy. Uh, but yeah, the bright is def uh, the future is definitely bright for Alan Tomlinson. Also, it's very, very hot, 31 degrees in England, uh, and my eyes are sweating, and I feel like my speech is, is, is getting slurred due to the heat. Uh, but we will push through. Cody Trinari, a bit of a... Uh, he's been a good rotation option. 100 before, uh, appearances for the club is, is pretty insane. But yeah, he's been good for us. 100% 17 uh, flair is showing in the game. Uh, love Cody Trenary. Hopefully he can keep on pushing forwards and developing. He's been, yeah, until he dropped off in March. And now uh, was picking it up again. Five goals for assists. Very nice. Luca Trenary. Uh, great versatility can play left back and cdm still going to volante roll uh which is very very helpful uh uh 20 years old now not really hitting like his potential but still got time and he's getting for like you know first team football so looking hopeful ian waters another goat who um five foot three just can't i don't know i, I 13 goals and three assists might not seem like a lot but it to me the stuff he does is I don't want to go there, but maybe it's Messi-esque. I don't know. Maybe it's the heat uh, and potential stroke incoming from said heat, but he definitely does some stuff that makes me very, very happy. Uh, I won Wilberforce, uh, not get an extension, did not get any game time, really. Um, and yeah, he doesn't look that good. Although, maybe he deserved a chance. I did want to loan him out. No one came in. Um, I don't know. This season, no one did. He did make one appearance for the club, and I think that might be his one and only. Or is that harsh? Does he does he deserve one more one year contract extension alone? Hmm, maybe. Yatek Zaya. Uh, his potential has been uh, is you know three stars. We did have an offer for him from Legia Warsaw. Uh, they did offer to buy him for I believe eighty five k, which is not not incredible. Uh, truth be told, he is not going to develop much more than this. He's he's been like he's the Polish the Polish winger man. He's he's the, he was meant to be the guy, but his his uh, potential has been you know found out as the Varon National League quality player. Um, and he's not like not much le improvement left in him, but I'll still always love him. And maybe if they come back in again for him, we tough to say goodbye. But maybe it has to be done. Ali Adiemi. Roberto Carlos, another player that never really developed for some reason. Great leader um, and useful player, but just, again, just a Corey type player. Just doesn't develop and is very, very, very sad. But he gets game time uh, and he'll be here for the future. His brother Daniel Adeyemi has no problem developing, actually, and he's been very good. Uh, scoring a couple goals, uh, five in total, which is uh, good to see. And there was, I think there was a week where he scored back-to-back. Uh, braces which is very incredible uh six foot four a uh, center back great rotation option uh very pleased to have a look at the club alberto aguado came through this academy uh this you can take that you just saw at the beginning of the video uh play two games and score two goals the future is bright and he will well knock on wood he would be the next Johnny o'keefe playing alongside him up top learning from him um and yeah just being a great player for us aj all press the man I, I touted to be great, and he he has the potential, but again, major injuries uh, happening to him, um, stifling his development. He's had a little bit of a low, but now he's coming back up. I did offer him another extension until the, for next year. Uh, squad player, he was a bit upset about game time. 21 years old now, so I don't know if he'll... He doesn't really got that much potential left in him. And we got Aguado coming through, Alvaro Navarro coming back. You can also play striker slash winger. And we have Douglas on loan who's coming back as well. So maybe this summer we try to sell AJ Allpress, which is very sad. And I did allude to it earlier in the video, but maybe it is AJ Allpress's time, which 
I don't know if anyone else felt that connection, but I felt like he was the first real superstar uh, to come through his breakout season where he scored probably most of his goals in that season where he's got 50 now, which is not a terrible return. 15 finishing, 14 composure. He just seems like a bagsman, but yeah, just injuries. You could say, you could like, that's a lot of injuries for a man who's only 21 years old. You could argue they did ruin him. Without those, he probably would be... I don't know, would it be like fair to say O'Keefe's level? Maybe. Amadou to Zibamboy and Goat, 21 years old now. Zibamboy, an international, 13 appearances, uh, first team goalkeeper, fans player of the season, uh, 40 appearances, 65 conceders, not terrible uh, for our goalkeepers. 144 appearances now. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I can't wait. For the future of Amadou. I was debating selling him, but now there's no way. Michael Clark, star centre back, uh, GOAT. He is developing. Love him very much. Please don't leave. £500 a week as well, and he's not demanding more. Uh, two years left in his contract. My guy. Dougie, six or five centre back coming through. Uh, a little bit of development, but a lot of stagnation since, well, pretty much January, December ish. Um, but yeah, great rotation option. Uh, at the back for us. Well, man, you can argue remain starter, 26 appearances uh, for Dougie. Gabriel Freer, despite his Spanish personality, has uh, established himself as the main uh, central defensive midfielder for us, really. Great player. Well, I don't think great player. Good player for us. Um, but injuries did kind of ruin him. Well, he was on a really good run of development, but then, yeah, got injured. Ashley Green, same story. Yeah, uh, well, He's never really been one to develop. He wasn't like crazy development until, well, December, then he got injured. Um, yeah, very sad. And Handy sides, or Hansies, as I like to call him, 414 appearances is a bit insane. Uh, reached his potential now. This is who he is uh, in his prime, 26 years old. Great rotation option, and I am pleased and honored to have him at the club, uh, and I hope he stays for the future. Jose Hurtado. One of my favorite players uh, of the save as well. Um, another just great player option to have where he offers coverage left back, center back, and right back. Um, potentials dropped to by half a star, but Hurtado will always be the guy. Uh, Jaquin Lasimba, two stars now, two and a half potential. There's still a little bit left in him, but he's regressing. I did offer him another extension. I gave him two years because he's here from the first intake with Jermaine Tansy. Uh, all his free kicks, all the joy he's bought, and he still pops over a goal here and there. Uh, 58 in total, 346 for the club. A good rotation option for the wing. Uh, you just have to keep him. Maybe one thousand uh, pounds a week is a bit too much for him, but I don't know. I feel like he's earned it over the years. Uh, same can be said for Dwayne Tansy, nearly on a grand a week. Uh, two stars, potential turn and a half. Uh, potential, sorry, current two. Um, gets a couple appearances a season, mainly off the bench. Super sub of his pace. Uh, got five goals this season, which is not terrible for a man who, well. Really peaked in around National <laughs> League North and just around National League. Uh, but yeah, uh, love Jermaine Tansy and I, I'm glad he's here. And uh, he probably will be here until his retirement. Alfie Jones went out alone. Uh, Terry McFadden has been our starting left back uh, and he's been very good. I like him a lot. Six foot, big defender. Yes, please. Uh, I just hope he keeps developing and there is not going to be a slump in it. Uh, Kieran McGrath. Hmm. He's one that has given me a lot of thought what to do this season. Maybe he just goes instead of all press. Because as much as I love McGrath, he is uh, unfortunately got the Okuri. I, I guess that's what we're going to identify it now as where a player just doesn't develop. No progress uh, being made uh, in the past couple of years. I get that he's 20, but come on, man. There's still a lot more left than he can give us. Um, maybe because his potential is not like five stars and he's probably near it. That That's why he's not developing like crazy, but Please, man. There's, there's like so much more you can add to your game. His finishing did go up by one, I suppose, but there is more to Kieran McGrath, I'm sure. He's just not shown us yet. And yeah, that was the first team. So I actually forgot to record this, but I'll, I'll try to put it at the front of the video. Uh, but I'm doing it last in like chronology of the different parts of the Cedar Review. But, anyways, uh, the past um, stages of how we actually did in season. Started really well, where I thought promotion time is maybe this season, uh, and then it just all went to shit. 
really, where we started being like a 14th league table team table. Then we were on a great winning run. This is when we like did well in the cups. I think that somewhere along the way we lost to Man City, the actual Man City in the FA Cup. Um, I, don't, I don't think it was embarrassing. I think we lost like three or two now. Um, or even three one. God, I don't know. I need to have it. We'll have a look afterwards. And then we were like promotion, uh, playoff. Sorry, sixth, seventh in the league, and then we just fell off, unfortunately. And we finished fourteenth. But next season, our defenders have improved. We had the second most amount of goals scored this season. I don't see why not. We can't push for promotion next season. Even just playoffs. I mean, like, let's not drop off for whatever reason in the end of the season. If we actually look at the schedule of how we did, I will scroll through. Uh, actually, let's just go through the cups and see how we actually did um, in them. Uh, so first of all, let's go FA Cup. There was no major runs, I suppose. Uh, Gateshead, well, it was supposed to expect to win. Hartlepool, same, 3-2. We love getting Hartlepool on the trophies. Um, we always did. And then 2-0 against Man City, come on. <laughs> We're not going to be Phil Foden and, well, Adjun Oritokozor. Gable Freight also sent off that game, did not help. Uh, FA Trophy, well, we've been playing like the season. Carabao Cup, we beat Notts County and then we lost to Southampton. Uh, Papa John's, obviously, we went on to win a lot of under 21 teams that we beat along the way, which helped. And Crawley, who were actually, well, flirting with first in the league, we managed to beat them. And it, it sends a good message for the future that if we go to like a playoff or, or, or a different cup competition, we generally do pretty well in finals. I don't know our ratio, but I'm pretty sure we've only lost. Have we lost that? Have we actually lost the final this save? Like in this save with Whitby Town? I'm not too certain i want to say no i think we've won uh all our cup finals i'm gonna we have to if any of you guys know leave, let me know in the comments if you ever lost a uh, cup final of any um sorts in any level of football uh and yeah this the this is the results if you want to stop and analyze them uh this is it uh for club info and well fun but not so fun stuff our junior coaching still is exceptional youth academy if youth facilities are adequate or decent as the starting spot however our training facilities have i hate this i mean i guess i understand it makes sense okay it does make sense but they regress over time and it's like we only upgraded them like five years ago and now they've they've regressed and we don't have money to improve them our finances um in league one are are pretty terrible 1.3 million depth and that in debt and that's with like playing good teams and all that stuff and the board are not willing to invest however our chairman is looking to step aside so hopefully inshallah fingers crossed we can get him we can get in like a sugar daddy or, or, or like that, that type of chair or that they put a lot of money in we can improve our facilities and get even better youth intakes because now i'm afraid our development our play the development of players will like get disrupted because of our below average training facilities and i hope that's not going to be the case um but yeah our key players running akifa unsurprisingly and a hot prospect alberto aguada also uh, no surprise when did he finish last season we finished 15 so actually improved by one spot which is amazing stuff i think next season season three is usually our season so we'll see how it goes but i'm aiming for playoffs anything short of that will be a disappointment uh but yeah that's all the stuff I'm pretty sure we go through uh, during a season review and that's the ending and all the uh, fun extras uh, about the club what's happening I'll keep you posted with the news uh, fingers crossed there's a new chairman next season uh, and yeah I'm just very grateful to everyone who made it to the end of the video if you did make it this far you clearly enjoyed it to some extent so please do leave a like uh, do subscribe to not miss out on future intakes and, and, and future uh, journeys and, and moments and whatnot and yeah for those interested in the highlights and what the players are doing I will uh, after the outro we'll have the compilation of all the goals uh, to end off the video and yeah you can enjoy that if you're into that and I hope to see you in the next video and I hope you have a great day